Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at Diplomacy. This is a two to seven player area majority area movement political game where you take the role of one of the great powers in Europe in the years prior to World War I. You will be holding, moving, supporting, and convoying armies and fleets trying to become the great power and control Europe. How do you become the great power, control Europe, and win the game? By being the first country to control 18 supply centers. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components, setup, and how gameplay works in Diplomacy. Now let's take a look at the components. You have the main game board. On the main game board, you have boundaries that are separated by a thick and thin black line. There are three types of provinces. Inland, water, and coastal. Also on the main game board, your supply centers are marked with a star. There are 34 supply centers on the main game board. In each of the seven great powers of Europe, you have control markers or flag markers. One side is the flag and the other side is the player color. Also in each of the seven colors, you have armies. These are your square units and they are allowed to travel to inland provinces and coastal provinces. Fleets, these are your rectangular units with a boat on one side and your player color on the other. These are allowed to travel on water provinces as well as coastal provinces. Also, these are used to convoy armies from one coastal province to another coastal province. The map pad, and finally, your rule book. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're gonna be setting this up for a seven player game, which takes three steps. Step one, place the main board. Place the main board in the center of the play area. Step two, get player components. Select a country and get the corresponding control markers or flag markers, armies, and fleets of that same color. Austria is red, England is dark blue, France is light blue, Germany is black, Italy is green, Russia is white, and Turkey is yellow. Also, get a map sheet. This can help you during your diplomatic planning. Step three, place player components. Place your control markers, armies, and fleets based on the chart in the rule book. Now let's take a look at the gameplay. A game consists of a number of rounds until a player controls 18 or more supply centers. When that occurs, the end of the game is triggered. A round. A round consists of a full year represented by a spring turn and a fall turn. Each turn represents six months. A turn. A turn consists of four or five phases. For a spring turn, you will have four phases. The diplomatic phase, order writing phase, order resolution phase, and retreat and disbanding phase. For a fall turn, you will have five phases. The diplomatic phase, order writing phase, order resolution phase, retreat and disbanding phase, and gaining and losing units phase. Now let's look at each phase in detail. Phase one, the diplomatic phase. It is recommended that this phase last 30 minutes the first time, and then each diplomatic phase after 15 minutes. This is where players discuss plans. These are conversations, deals, schemes, agreements, public documents, and announcements. Keep in mind that these are not binding, and are usually related to locations and strategies. Also, you could use the map pad to help track your plans. After the time is up, we move to phase two, order writing phase. This is where all players write orders for their units on a slip of paper and reveal simultaneously. Players are usually given five minutes to write their orders. To help distinguish turns and orders, you would write spring 1901 above your orders. And then in subsequent turns, you would go to fall 1901, and then spring 1902, and so on. Keep in mind that orders are followed specifically, so make sure that you write your orders correctly. An A or F represents army or fleet, followed by the current location of that army or fleet, like London. You can also use an abbreviation for the location by using the abbreviation given on the map pad. Then you would indicate the hold, move, support, or convoy for that army or fleet. Keep in mind that only one unit can be present in a province. Now let's look at the four types of orders. Hold, move, support, and convoy. Hold. This keeps your unit in place. This is also what happens when an army or fleet isn't given an order. 
After writing the current location of your army or fleet, you would simply write the word hold move. This was referred to as attacking. In an order, you would use a dash between the current location and the move location. Armies can move to an adjacent inland or coastal province, but not a water province. Fleets can move to adjacent water or coastal provinces, but not an inland province. Keep in mind that no named sections on the map cannot be occupied. When moving to coasts with multiple coastal options, like moving a fleet around Spain, you would indicate the north coast or the south coast using NC or SC. There are also special movement clarifications located in the rulebook. Standoffs. This is where units of the same strength cannot move to the same location. When this occurs, they would hold in their original location. If there is a unit existing where the standoff occurred, they would stay in that position. Keep in mind that one unit not moving can stop a series of movements. Also keep in mind, units cannot trade places, but a three-way move can happen if no exact switching takes place. Support orders. This is where armies and fleets can support one another to make their attack or defense stronger without moving. All units have equal strength, so support is the only way to dislodge a unit. Keep in mind that support can be given without consent and cannot be refused. The strength of the attack or the defense is based on units and supports. To write the support, you would start with the A or F and the current location of the army or fleet, and then the letter S for support, and then the army or fleet that they are supporting with their current location, and then the fighting location, or just their current location, if it were helping in defense. A unit not ordered to move can still be supported in its hold. If a unit does move, the support must match the unit's move to successfully support that unit. Unless one, either the defense or attack, is stronger than the other, supports can still have standoffs. When one is stronger than the other, a dislodged unit can still cause a standoff in a different province than the one that dislodged it, but cannot affect the one that dislodged it. Support can be cut off if the support is attacked from another province than where the support is given, or if the supporting unit is dislodged. And a dislodged unit can still cut off another army. The convoy order. This is where you are moving armies over water using fleets. Fleets in a water province can take an army from a coastal province to an adjacent coastal province. Or multiple fleets could take them from multiple water provinces to an adjacent coastal province. To write this, the army would select their current location and the new coastal location, and then the fleets would write their current location, and then C for convoy, and then A for army, and then their current location and their move location. Keep in mind that if orders contradict, then both fail. A standoff in a destination or dislodgement of a fleet means a failed convoy. Self-dislodgements cannot occur, but self-standoffs can and can be utilized to keep control of three provinces. Keep in mind that units can trade places via convoys. Once all the players are given five minutes to write their orders, all the orders are revealed, and then we move to phase three. Phase three, the order resolution phase. This is where the orders are carried out. Phase four, retreat and disbanding phase. Any dislodged units will retreat. Players will write the location down and reveal at the same time where they would like to move their units that are retreating. It can be an adjacent province, not occupied, not where the attack came from, and not in a standoff province. If players retreat to the same province or can't be retreated, then the units are removed from the board and they are disbanded. And then if this was a fall turn, we would move to phase five, gaining and losing units phase. This is where you will check supply centers and adjust units. This is carried out in two steps. Step one, check for supply centers you control, including ones that you controlled but are vacant. Step two, players will adjust units to match the number of supply centers they control. If you gain units, you can place them in an unoccupied supply center province in your home country. When doing so, Players will write and reveal simultaneously where they are building their units. You would write type, build, and then their location. Also during this step, if players have more units on the board than their number of supply centers, then they would lose a number of units equal to the difference. Then spring and fall turns would continue until a player gains control of 18 supply centers. When this occurs, they are the great power, control Europe, and win Diplomacy.